Hi guys. Last week, I realized that I could use my love of cooking in my vlogs. So this week, I'm going to try something special. Paying homage to my favorite YouTube chef, I'll be cooking something which our Japan trip also inspired me to try, okonomiyaki. I've collected my ingredients, and as you can see, this will be a gluten-free variation, because it would be a jerk move to make a family member sick. This could take a while though, so we should get started, but it does feel like I'm missing something. Much better. Now we're ready to cook. First, we need to clear our work surface. It's the only way to be a card-carrying member of the Clean Bench Club. What is this piece of... To begin with, you'll need to practice opening and closing cupboards, because you have no idea where anything is. Eventually though, you will want to grab some scales. In my opinion, if you don't own kitchen scales, then you don't kitchen. Starting with our glue tile flower here, we'll just open this up with some scissors because we're civilized people. Then, like civilized people, we'll use a spoon before giving up on civilization and just tipping in 200 grams. Put the rest away, remembering our closing cupboard technique. Next, check if your cabbage is too big. It is. So we'll grab a chopping board and then close the cu oh, what we've forgotten already. Cut off 400 grams. We're making enough for four people here. Then throw away anything that offends your eyes. Next, chop up the cabbage as thinly as you possibly can. Before remembering that you weren't born in a barn and close that door. Back to it. Once you've thinly sliced the whole thing, check if there are any pieces which aren't to your liking. Like, I don't know, this ugly so-and-so? Or maybe this grossy? Ugh. Put it all aside for later, then clean bench club. The recipe I'm using calls for kohlrabi, but I couldn't get any, so a Swede will do... Oh, it's wet. Grab your weirdly shaped grater and grate the whole thing. This particular Swede is a bit stubborn. Hopefully yours is easier. Why is this so hard? Maybe if I just... This doesn't seem much better. And... Oh! When you really can't take any more, give up. I don't know, maybe make yourself a coffee? My preferred method is an AeroPress. One day, I will go full YouTube hipster pour over, but until then, this is perfect. Ah, that's better. Finish off the Swede. Take another sip of coffee. And collect every last scrap. Not because it's needed, but because it was so darn hard to get. Clean bench club. On to our spring onions. The recipe says that we need, ow! The recipe says we need half a bunch, but how much is a bunch? I guess this'll do. We chop it all up, then chop up some larger green bits for garnish later. Now clean bench club. Make absolutely sure that you have a measuring cup and not some ordinary cup. Then open a carton of gluten-free, oh, sorry about that, fish stock, 200 mils. That was easy. This smoked salmon is tear up, oh. Weigh out 200 grams. This is non-sliced salmon, so some bits are a bit big. You're kind of after one bite chunks here. Clean bench club. Three eggs, broken, tortured, and beaten. To mix our batter, find a large bowl. This one will do. Pour in the flour-like powder. Add our eggs, the fish stock, then grab a spoon and mix. After a while you should notice that a spoon was a bad idea, at which point you'll want to change to a whisk. Then whisk until smooth. Now we can add our swede. All of it, damn it. The spring onions, our smoked salmon, and finally, the cabbage. Grab the spoon again and thoroughly mix together. It should look like this. If this were real flour, you'd want the batter to sit now. So out of a habit of timing, we can make another garnish. Fold over a sheet of nori. We just want to cut thin strips off of this. These ones here are probably a bit too long. Half this length would do. 
Now, because we're making four servings here, I'm going to weigh out four equal bowls. Clean bench club. Then reward yourself with a sip of coffee. Oh no, this one's cold. Ugh. Next, we cook. Grab a frying pan. I'm using this so that you can see better. I'll just plug it in. Uh, two ticks. Add some oil. And then kind of hope it heats up. Maybe. If it does, add the batter and encourage it into a pancake shape, a couple of centimetres thick or so, and cook it for around four or five minutes. During this time, you could maybe enjoy a nice Japanese beer. This one here is mid-strength, so it doesn't matter that it's still the morning. Plus, you know, I'll have half with the okonomiyaki. When it's time, grab an enormous spatula, or two, and flip the whole thing over. And, wow, actually that, that wasn't bad. It should be nice and browned. It'll be another five minutes on this side, so maybe you could finish the beer? I mean, it's already open. After checking that the belly is cooked, it's time to plate up. This part is really fun. This is okonomi sauce, which is absolutely delicious and you should pour on heaps. Maybe some more. This particular bottle of sauce isn't gluten-free. Spreading it with a brush is traditional, though. Then the Japanese mayo which works best when zigzagged over the pancake, kind of like a Japanese arcade game with a gorilla throwing barrels on it. Top it all off with some garnishes. Oh, I almost forgot. I also managed to get some bonito flakes, which I absolutely love and will sprinkle generously on top. One final clean bench for the win, and there you have it, gluten-free okonomiyaki. All that's left is to enjoy. It looks pretty good, and it is. Excuse me while I walk out of frame with my lunch.